We just celebrated the coming of a new year and the ending, praise the Lord, of the last year, and we won't even mention its name. When you hear New Year, what do you think of? Maybe you think about a party. Maybe you think about the ball dropping. Or maybe you think about New Year's resolutions, like I mentioned before. I was listening to a podcast about John the Baptist and his call for people to repent. You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath of, to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. One of the commentators in the podcast said that it reminded her of the Jewish celebration of the Day of Atonement, a day when Jews think about the mistakes that they've made during the year and how maybe they have hurt other people and ask for forgiveness, make amends. They actually are encouraged to make amends with the people they might have hurt. And seek atonement, thus the name Day of Atonement. Then in the podcast she said that we have a similar secular practice every year to do the same thing. It's called the New Year's Resolution. And I never really thought about New Year's resolutions that way. Um, but, you know, what does a New Year's resolution involve? Well, first, you have, to, you have to think about areas of your life that aren't exactly the way you think they should be. My number one answer over the years is that I'm overweight. And so I resolve to do what it takes to lose weight. So what's the problem with New Year's resolutions? New Year's resolutions gets a lot of heat. Problem is, we break them. Usually before the month's up, and sometimes before the day's up. A lot of people say we should make New Year's resolutions because they usually fail. But shouldn't we try to be healthier? Shouldn't we try to break bad habits? Be better people? Shouldn't we try to be the people that God created us to be? Even if we might fail? John the Baptist called people to repent, to change their ways so that they would be in line with what being people of God is. He talked about sharing with those who are in need. He talked about treating people fairly. He talked about acting justly without violence. These are good resolutions as well. As Christians, we should be sharing with people that are in need. We should be honest and do something about injustice. This week we have seen the consequences of a lack of honesty and justice. When we don't tell the truth, there are consequences, especially if you lie over and over and over again. And we get other people to believe in that lie. Or if we know that something is a lie, but we treat it as if it's truth out of loyalty to that person that's lying, or for our own self-benefit. As we have seen in our own country, the results can be disastrous. People can get hurt and die, and our institutions that are trying to help us live good and peaceful lives can suffer. God doesn't demand things like sharing, honesty, fairness, justice, for no reason. The world needs these things in order to function well. But like New Year's resolutions, 
we often fail. But does that mean we give up? It, does it mean that we only try to do things where we know we won't fail? No. As people of God, as Christ's church, or as a country, we should strive to be all that we were created to be. Whether it be sharing, being truthful, treating people with respect, treating them fairly, working for justice, or taking care of our body. That's what people of God do. That's how we are to live. Yet at the end of all that John says that we shall do, we should do, all the things that we should do but often fail at, we find Jesus. It's interesting. We go through this whole reading and at the end, almost as an afterthought, there's Jesus. We hear about the government leaders at that time. We hear about John the Baptist's message. That takes about 20 verses of the 22 verses in our reading for today. And then we hear, oh yeah, Jesus was baptized. We hear from heaven. God loves him and is well pleased with him. That's only two verses. But maybe that's because those two verses are all we need. Look back at Luke as he's quoting the prophet Isaiah. The voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, Make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, every mountain and hill shall be made low. The crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of the Lord. Isaiah says, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Doesn't that sound a little bit like John's call to repentance? Things that we are supposed to do. And then when we go to verse 5 and 6 from Isaiah, Isaiah says, The valley shall be made filled, the mountains made low, the crooked made straight, rough, smooth, all flesh see the salvation of the Lord. That sounds like what God will do. We are people of God. We are about living as Christ calls us to live. As, God, as John says, we share, we live honestly, we stand up for justice, and yes, our body is the temple of the Lord. So we take care of it, trying to live healthy in our body, mind, and spirit. We love God, we love our neighbor. It's all a tall, tall order. And there will be times when we, let's say, don't succeed. But you know what? Jesus is here. Our country is facing challenging times like most of us can never remember ever happening. And this week's events don't make it easier. But as hard as it is, even though we have seen challenges in our country like never before, Jesus is here. The beloved of the Father is here. The one who, before he did anything, heaven said, with you he is well pleased. He is here. He is with us. It will not be easy, but I say we're in good hands.